Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for joining us. Um, almost don't even know where to start. Um, in my last video, I brought in a beautiful <clears throat> 25 horsepower Suzuki from the mid 80s, I guess. Um, didn't have to do too much to it at all. Um, but I, I did need to take off the carburetor and uh, and it has a nice all aluminum carburetor and I have not yet got to that uh, for a few reasons. Um, and I will show you some of those. Okay, so I got on the inner tube and I looked for some paint. Um, for this beautiful little 25 Suzuki. Couldn't find any. I came up with a couple of websites. Some of my uh, subscribers suggested, I think it was called Color Right. And I actually um, went to their website and then I, I, I took a, a photo of the, the plate on the engine and said, here's the, the paint I'm looking for. Or here's the paint for the model, and here's the model, and then I took a couple uh, uh, pictures. <laughs> and they said they could make the paint. Um, mm -mm. I ain't willing to pay. You understand, I ain't willing to pay that much for what they wanted. Um, mm -mm. little bitty thing it was over 160 bucks plus the shipping and I was like no nope. so then I thought well I'll go down to my hanky hardware store my auto parts store and see if they could uh, and I took a part from the engine I took the transom clamp and thought if I maybe they could match it or get close so I took it down to the hardware store and they said, no, we don't, we don't do oil-based paints. It don't do a whole lot of good, I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong. To go spraying your outboard with latex paint. <clears throat> so then I went up to my, uh, my auto parts store. We only got two of them. I went up there and they told me, yeah, we might be able to mix that. And they gave me this book full of different colors. And I found one that was, I think, spot on, really. I said, yep. Mix me up a quart of that. Okay, it's going to take two or three days. Went back two or three days, not ready. Went back five or six days, not ready. Eight, nine days, not ready. Two weeks, not ready. I realized they ain't going to mix that paint. So I told them after two weeks, I said, forget about it. So, that's where I'm kind of at on this Zuki. It's a wonder, well, they are. If anybody's ever had or dealt with these 80s two-stroke Suzukis, um, they are just about as good as it gets. They're, I mean, they're bulletproof. They're tanks. And I'm thinking, I want to keep this motor, so I, I want to make it nice. And what I plan on doing is on my welded aluminum skiff, I want to take my DT40 Suzuki off of my Bay Runner, put it on my welded skiff, and then put this 25 on my Bay Runner. Because my DT40 on that Bay Runner, which is a very light boat, actually pushes it way too fast. So, that's my hopes and plans, but I've got to come up with a paint, a complete paint overall scheme, 
or I got to find this paint. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to find this paint. And that's the one flaw, <laughs> if you want to call it that, that I can say about these Suzuki's is they painted them the ugliest colors. I mean, this thing's in between a it's not gold, it's not green, it's not silver. I don't know what it is, but my DT40 is the same way. Um, I wish Suzuki would have, uh, you know, done something a little different with their paint back then. But they're bulletproof motors. I really like them, and I, I want to kind of keep this one and put on my, my Bay Runner skiff. So, that's where I'm at on the Suzuki. And then, in my last video or so, I forgot to mention it, but I want to give a big shout out and thank you to a Mr. D. Robert. He's my neighbor. He lived right over there. He lived right over there. In Canada. Right over there in Canada. But he saw one of my videos, probably more than one, where I'm having these trouble getting these old um, carburetor nuts off of, especially the little 9.9, .9 15-horsepower, low-profile motors. And he sent me this custom um, wrench in 11 mil, and he did some fabrication on there, on the top. And I just want to say a big thank you. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to give it a try. And I do got a little low profile 9915 out there that it's got the whole transom thing busted all off pieces. So that's a wonderful thing. And thank you so much. Um, now, <clears throat> you say, well, you can't find some paint, so you ain't good. You're just going to, you know, you're not going to work on Albert. I just won't work on Albert because I can't find my paint. No, 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 no. There's been a whole lot of other stuff going on. Up here, where I live, we do a lot of subsistence stuff um, for our food and so forth. That includes hunting, fishing, trapping, crabbing, yawning. So I've got all that going on. And in that pursuit, <laughs> my shop is a disaster. Uh, I mean, really, it is. You can see I got tackle boxes, tackle boxes, tackle boxes, predator calls, guns. Oh man, up there, whole bunch of tackle boxes. But this has been a project. Well, do you remember when my workbench slap bar freezer went kaput and I went to my good buddy Charlie who has like serious off the chart carpentry skills and so forth and he built me this workbench put it on casters I can roll it around never mind that it's cluttered that's me but I've got a video of him uh, building this, hooking me up, and me going up and picking it up. Well, my garage door has been like a piece of garbage for, well, the last two years. Well, more than that. He put all new hardware up there, springs, death springs, I call them, but he, he knows how to do that. Um... New cables, new door panels, and she's she's as tight as a flounder butt. Um, I mean, he he hooked me up, took care of me as always. Diablo, Diablo.
maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, and I've been doing a lot of that, too. I've got my buddy, Q, that's been using my boat. He loves to fish, and he's been going out and getting me halibut, gray cod, lean cod, flounder, sea bass, even herring, which I love to smoke up and make kippers. So I've been doing that. Oh, my. I need a break. If you're wondering what's in the smoker, those are smoked kippers, smoked herring. Cold water North Pacific herring. I like to take those, put them in oil, and jar them up. Caught right out that backyard, you know, right out there in that specific ocean. Yummy. Hey! I need your help up in here. What are these? I'm always finding stuff like this in the dumpster and stuff. What are these? You guys told me in a video or two or three ago, I asked this weird wrench tool thing, and it turned out to be a fire hydrant tool. What are these? They're knurled on the edges, and then this one's got a big point. I mean, I was thinking some kind of plumb bob, but I mean, I don't know. That's what the back of it looks like. And real pointed. This one, same thing, it's knurled and all that. The back of it looks a little different, but it looks like maybe something you bang on or something. I don't know. But I don't, there's no markings that I can see at all on either one of them. I haven't wire wheeled them or nothing, but I don't see any markings. So what are they? Mystery tools. Let me know. Alright, I'm just doing a little quick clean on the uh, Suzuki carb. It looks really good. Um, but we're going to give her a clean nonetheless. And uh, I opened it up and it was it looked really good inside so got my little wires and so forth and we'll just make sure everything's unplugged and I'll give her a shot of compressed air You Make sure 
everything's unplugged. Little bit of compressed air in there. Little tri flow in there. Now I counted the turns on this needle when I took it out, and it was one and a half out from a light seat. So that's what we'll put it back at. And there's a light seat right there. So a half and one and a half. That's what you do. There's my needle. Mm -hmm. and there's me float. Come on, come on. You can do it. Maybe. Looks really good. This is just some old gas I put in a jug. You can see how yellow it is. But it'll make good cleaning stuff for that, that yuck that's down in there. Yeah, you clean that old nasty mess right up. I got some around back too. I need to get a little bit. creepy crawlies and stuff out of here. I think what I'll do while I got this gas in here, fuming up real good is put the lid back on it. Hopefully gasify some of them creepy crawlies. Oh, they in there. I got skeletons and everything else.
Now I'm gonna let the super clean. Just soak there for about five to six minutes. You don't want to let it go dry. You want to keep it wet. But just slather that up real good. Then I'll take the hose and just rinse that off. And she will be a lot better. Now it's been about five minutes or so. You can see I got the electronics covered up. And when you when you're rinsing these off, and I've got the intake plug, when you're rinsing these off, you just lightly do it and stay away from going up under the flywheel and such. You just want to just rinse the soap off. Something about like this right here is all you need. No high pressure, just a little bit of stream of water. Again, staying away from under the flywheel, staying away from the electronics. Here's my power pack and all that. There you go. Not all you need. That's about all you need. There's my electronics. Now, you can see I got a wad of paper towel in the intake. Let's look how this looks now. Don't that look so much better? Ain't she much? much cleaner and prettier that's how you give one a good shower and a bath it won't hurt a thing if you do it like that and it'll make it pretty and cutie the way it's supposed to be okay so we got the uh, carburetor back on the air silencer and now that everything's all clean and pretty, I'll let it sit here and just air dry. And uh, then I'll take a rag and some uh, Tri-Flow and spray a nice thin coat of lubricant all over everything. And she'll be good to go. Yippee! Well, it's a, a beautiful day, but it's a very breezy day. I got white caps out behind the house. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a pretty blustery day. I, I detect a little itty bitty pinch of fall in the air. So, um, well, we've got that Suzuki squared away. I was cutting off that old uh, rusty, looks like homemade steering tube that was on there because I'm leaving this thing set up tiller. But uh, yeah, I don't know what Suzuki was thinking with their paint jobs. They built such a wonderful, wonderful old two stroke outboard. And then they painted it baby vomit green. You understand. But uh, now I'll have to come up with a paint scheme. I'm thinking something along the lines of a metallic gray, maybe some Yamaha or Tahatsu paint on it. But uh, let's... You know, this one's obviously spent a lot of time outside on a rack somewhere. It's all sun bleached. 
Uh, you can see that. Yep, baby vomit green. I guess. We'll make it look better than that. I'll have to decide on what I'm going to do. And then I want to show you something that you never do. Ever. On a two-stroke outboard. I don't care what they say or what the manuals say. You see that right there? You don't ever do that. It's 50 to 1. Never ever is it 100 to 1. Of course, unless you want to destroy your outboard, then you can do that. I just extended the life of this outboard for probably 50 years. You understand? 50 to 1. TCW3. Always. All right then, me and old Fret. We're going to leave you with that. I want to thank you for stopping in and watching. In my next video coming up, I've got a Mercury Mariner fitting two-stroker and it's not the video is not just for the uh, Mercury Mariner fans it's for anybody it's for the seized up outboard I got a good hack that I want to show you on this one um, something I've seen before something I'll see again and this will help you out if you're a person that likes to go around and get a good deal on seized up outboards, parts, motor, or whatnot. Make sure you tune in to my next vid. It's got a, a really good hack in there for you. So um, I'll see you then. That's going to be a wrap on this one. Thank you for watching. As always, that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.